All right, Dave Foster here, and I thought you know I was going to do a, a full-on review uh, and comparison of the uh, Galaxy Camera One and the Galaxy Camera Two. Uh, but what I decided to do is just a really quick um, comparison using the actual uh, camera. So this is a video uh, that I'm recording from the uh, Galaxy Camera Two and taking a video of the Galaxy Camera One. Um, both cameras are really nice. Uh, I like them both. Uh, they have um, similar features. I will say that the 2 is a lot lighter than the 1 um, and has some cool uh, things you can do with animated, like making animated GIFs and stuff like that, So, uh, which is fun. Um, but the, the 2, or the 1 here, uh, has black um, and, and white with black accents and it's a little bit sturdier material I would say but it but that makes it heavier uh, the screen sizes are about the same uh, this is the screen Let me get down here for this one and it's got a little bit different when you get into the mode settings and stuff like that. Like you've got your smart settings, uh, which you can scroll through. Um, night, fireworks, light trace, some pretty cool stuff. Um, I usually keep it in auto mode. But the cool thing about this camera, uh, and both of them do this actually, is you can come in here and click on expert mode and uh, mess with your aperture your EV brightness, um, shutter speed, your uh, shutter speed again, um, just a lot of stuff, uh, which is really cool. So I can come in here and adjust this. So you can see the, this is the, light so the exposure so that's pretty cool um, and you know a lot of the little things like timer flash uh, then you just push the button on the side here pop up the flash and you can set the timer to take a picture And there it took a picture with the flash. Um, but another cool thing is if you go to the home screen, you can see that this is a full-on Android uh, operating uh, platform device. So I've got Google Plus on here. And the cool thing is as I'm taking pictures, like you just saw the picture I just took, if I come into my photos, you should already see most of the pictures I've been taking already of these cameras. So it's definitely not instant, but I find that within generally a minute after taking a picture, uh, it's already there, which is really cool. Um, and, and if I kept refreshing this, uh, the one that I just took with the flash, would uh, show up here. So you can actually install, you know, like I've got Instagram on here, Google Plus, uh, and of course the Play Store. Um, and so I can, uh, I automatically can send anything to Drive or whatever. So for instance, when I take a picture, and this is going to go into the picture that I just took, um, and I can click on share via drive and I've got a folder set up called pre post images so I click on that that goes right to my folder pre post images and then I can pull it into PicMonkey or whatever editor I want to 
um, to get that ready to edit and get out. Again, it goes to Google Plus automatically, so I don't have to do that, but that's my system for knowing what images I need to edit. Because any of them that go into pre-post images, I know need edited. Once I edit them, I put them in post images, and then I'm done. So, uh, and I also, I have an external card in here, um, which is 64 gigs. Uh, so, and I really um, will probably never run out of space on this thing. My one main frustration with this camera is the charging port. If you don't have long fingernails, you cannot get this thing open. I usually have to grab a guitar pick, like I'm not going to be able to do it right now uh, to even get this thing open. If I go grab a guitar pick or a penny or something like that, I can generally get it in there and get it open. But let me see if I can find something here. Thumbtack. So once you get it open, you have to fold it up like this and get it out of the way. Um, they've really uh, made an improvement in that area on the Galaxy Camera 2 and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, as far as the top of the camera, you've got the power button. Uh, this is the flash, which the button to the flash is over here on the side. You just push it, it pops up like that. You can't adjust it though, it stays in that one uh, one area and, you can, and you, it just shine, shows forward. You can't move it up or down like you can on the 2 and I'll show you that too. Uh, then you've got your, of course, your zoom in, zoom out. And when you're playing music or anything like that, this is your volume up, volume down, uh, which is pretty cool. So overall, uh, it's a great camera. You've got your mini HDMI here, uh, and then your battery port, um, and your S micro SD card slot right there. And um, like I said, you've got a mini HD there. And they, the cool thing is they make it so that if you've got this closed, you can still pop that open for the mini HDMI. You don't have to open the main battery door. And then there's the uh, where you can mount it to a tripod, uh, which I can have this thing on a tripod pretty much all the time. But the reason I even tried this camera uh, initially is because I wanted a camera that I could just instantly upload and not have to, because my frustration with most cameras is you have to pull the card out, you have to put it in the computer, or you have to plug the computer in and download the photos. Um, and it's just an extra step that I feel in, in this day and age we shouldn't necessarily have to take. So that is uh, the Galaxy Camera 1. And so now we're going to move on to the Galaxy Camera 2. Okay, so this video I'm recording with the Galaxy Camera 1. Um, and the difference in the, the video quality, um, the one records in 720, but the two records in 1080p. So a little bit difference there. Um, and let me show you really quick. The interface is just a little bit different too on the Galaxy Camera 2. Um, if I come to the home screen, just aesthetically, it's it's different uh, in the way that everything functions. One thing that I noticed right away is on the two, you've got this little area for your thumb. Uh, on the one, it was a little bit hard to hold and, and keep your finger off of the, um, the screen. So you've got this as a little bit of a holder, which makes it a little bit more ergonomic, which is cool. Um, and then again, Android uh, Jelly Bean uh, platform, and I've got Instagram, Drive, Google+, my gallery on here, which I pretty much, I, I unloaded all the apps. I kept the weather and stuff on here because that way, if I'm going to go outside and shoot, I can look and say, okay, it's uh, 62 degrees outside, cloudy, you know, I'm probably not going to go out and shoot today. Um, but let's go into the camera, and again, this, this functions the same way. Um, I could download any app I wanted on here. I could have my email and all that stuff come right to my camera if I wanted to. But with my camera, I don't want to be distracted with that stuff, so I removed it all. Uh, I don't have notifications on to, to come on from Google Plus or anywhere because I don't want to be bothered with that stuff when I'm shooting. So, open up the camera. Now, one thing uh, that I noticed, like, first of all, Instead of the black, you've got the silver. Uh, looks like chrome. It is plastic, uh, so probably a little bit 
um, cheaper, a little bit lower quality as far as the uh, material, but it's it, it feels a lot lighter. I mean, what the, it's not. It's I don't know how much lighter it is, but it is definitely lighter. Um, it looks nice. It's on the top and the bottom. We've got the chrome. Uh, you've still got the ports there for the battery and the HDMI in the same place and the, the mount for the tripod. So most everything is exactly the same. This door is different. I can actually open this one. There we go. So I can get that door open. It's a lot easier to access to put the uh, plug in. Uh, this is a headphone jack, and I didn't mention that on the one, but that is there as well. So you can put in headphones for video or whatever. Uh, but as far as the features, you've got some different modes here now too. So if I go into smart mode, uh, there's some new ones. Selfie alarm. Selfie alarm, uh, what it does is it pretty much when you hold the camera uh, out and it picks up your face, it will beep to let you know and then it will automatically take the picture. Um, some of these are really cool too, like best photo, you can take five or six photos or whatever and then it will let you pick from the best one uh, of several things from the best one. Um, smart mode, that's pretty much where it suggests what mode it should be in. I don't like that mode because then I have to, it just does weird things. Uh, light trace, you've seen those where people take pictures of the city at night and the car lights are all um, streaked. Interval. So that's kind of like a, if you were to do a stop motion animation or something, interval would work. Sound and shot, you can take... Uh, it, images that have a little bit of sound, so they're mini videos. Uh, eraser, save the best picture after erasing moving objects from five consecutive pictures. So if you've got something in the background that's moving, you can remove it, which is pretty cool. Some of the stuff that you can do in this thing is pretty cool. Uh, this is if you have, this is uh, kind of cool. It shows a picture of somebody jumping out of a plane. And if you take five consecutive pictures, you can actually piece them together so it's like one image. Uh, and show that person five different times. It's pretty cool. Animated photo. Now this is pretty cool. I took one of the dogs yesterday and if you're taking a picture on let's say the side of the road and you've got traffic moving on the right hand side um, or on the road, I don't know what I say the right hand side, uh, on the road, you can actually, it'll freeze the person, freeze everything around it, but you can make the car so they still move. It's pretty cool. Um, and waterfall uh, where you get the the flowing water where it looks like it's uh, connected or whatever, and it just makes a really cool effect. And then, of course, panorama. Um, so it does have some some other cool things that the uh, one does not. But you know, I I generally uh, stay in auto. It just depends on what I'm doing. I mean, when I I was taking some macro shots and stuff, uh, where the macro mode really comes in handy uh, for close ups. And I mean, like, I was taking uh, pictures of some mushrooms that I saw on a tree. So you put it in macro, and then you can get really close to the object, and it gets really clear. I mean, if you can go through my photos on Google+, Plus, um, you would see the uh, mushroom picture that I took that I'm basically uh, almost against the mushroom, and it's just really clear. And, and that's one thing, too, I've been really impressed with with this camera. Um, it's just the overall quality of the images. It's very impressive. Um, I, I uh, even took some pictures zoomed in of some birds and stuff, and it's just so clear. I mean, it looks like, because it has a 21 times zoom lens. So, um, you know, you can get in there pretty close. Uh, now, this camera has uh, some voice recognition as well, the two. So if I say, cheese it just took a picture. So, you know, I can capture a picture just by saying capture or different uh, tones like that, gallery. So now I'm in my gallery looking through my pictures and capture. 
So pretty cool. Um, the flash on this one is different. I put the flash up. It actually is movable. So if I'm taking a picture uh, and I want to hold this up a little bit so that it doesn't shine the flash directly at the person but still uh, kind of illuminates the, the area, I can do that. I can hold it up to even make it go up or whatever uh, then just put it back in there. So which that's that's a pretty cool feature because sometimes to have the flash right in somebody's face is a little bit too much light. Um, so and and. and Instead of it being on the side like it is on the one, it's on the top. And I noticed that it, I mean, the, the flash on this thing is pretty cool too. I mean, I, I, I've i just, like I've said several times, been very impressed with the quality of the photos these things produce. Um, it's actually made me uh, feel like a, a real photographer. And I know a lot of people are, you know, they want the features of like the Canon Rebel or the Nikons and stuff like that. But for me... It's it's the convenience of being able to upload these images right away to Google Plus uh, into my library, and I don't have to it's inconvenience myself and and download them and all that stuff. So that's been the biggest thing for me uh, with these cameras, and I I absolutely love them. Um, the two I'm I'm happy with it. So now I've got this one. Oh, and I want to say too, this is uh, NFC compatible, um, so I can actually. Uh, just tap my phone to the side of this and use my phone uh, as a viewfinder. So let me show you that real quick. All right, so I'm going to unlock my phone and I'm going to open the camera app like this and touch it. Okay, so now as you can see, My phone is now the viewfinder for the camera. So if I turn the camera, like I'm doing now, okay. So I'm gonna put it. I'll put it at. Uh, I'll put it at my Captain America photo. I can't really lift it up here, but now if you look here on my phone, I'm seeing the same thing. So I can zoom in right here on my phone. And it's not letting me zoom, but it does because uh, I have already. But if I click photo, it just took the photo on my camera. I can adjust the timer. I can turn on the flash. There, now it's zooming. So you can see how it's zoomed in on my phone and on the camera. I zoom back out. And then I can uh, save and everything uh, to my camera or to the Smartphone Plus camera. So let's say I want to do both. Say OK. So now when I take a picture, OK, just took a picture. And now that's in my gallery on my phone and on my camera. So. If I wanted to share that with somebody in a text message, I can open it up. And actually, if I just go to my gallery, then I could click share and send this in a text message. There we go, converted it, and sent. So that's convenient as well because then it's on my camera, Google Plus, and my phone all at the same time, and I don't have to do anything special. Exit the viewfinder, and I am back. Uh, let me close the viewfinder here. Exit. That's one thing I'm still learning with the viewfinder that you got to exit it 
um, otherwise it still stays on. So there you go. That is my review of the Galaxy Camera 1 and 2. I guess it's my comparison. Um, I'm definitely liking the 2 uh, with the additional features. So hope you like it as well. Um, pay attention because I'm probably going to be selling the, the 1. Uh, and I'll make somebody a really good deal on it. Uh, it's a great camera. I take care of my stuff so it's in great condition. I've only had it for a little over a month. So uh, it's barely used. Um, so yeah, watch for that. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.